Hey guys, welcome to Real Estate Wisdom Podcast, episode number 32. Yes, we have recorded 32 episodes so far uh, with various guests talking about real estate matters. And today we have with us a Prerna Baweja, mortgage broker from Mortgage Architect. And today we're going to talk about uh, intricacies of securing financing for building projects, understanding the landscape of construction loans, and exploring mortgage options available for self-employed individuals in Ontario. And uh, please help me welcome uh, Prerna. Hey, thanks Vishal. Thank you for calling me over for your podcast. I'm so excited and honored to be here. Well, welcome. You always uh, helping uh, my clients with uh, various options for financing. Again, my honor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one thing, what they tell me about you is, you are very detailed and your follow-up is very good. Thank you. And, uh, and I think like that's the reason I keep sending you uh, clients as well as appreciate you that because you trust me with your own investment properties which you want to list with me. And uh, so it goes a long way. And uh, I know it's, I can't believe that uh, we know each other almost 19 years now. Yes, we do. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, thanks to our common friend um, when I first met you and uh, Saurabh, your uh, husband. And uh, since then, like, you know, we've been in touch. We here and there. Um, I used to play golf with Saurabh. And, uh, <clears throat> but like once you started Mortgage and you reach out to me and we did the first time home buyer seminar, uh, we got the very good response from people. And we able to generate some leads from there as well. Uh, very valuable information you provided to them. Um, but like I always, I, I have the question about whenever I'm referring somebody, uh, I always look into that, how quickly they respond. Right. And are they providing the same level of standard which I provide to my clients? And I'm happy to say that, like, you know, that uh, I found every time my clients saying that, that they didn't feel uh, that we're not a part of team, like uh, the official team. Exactly. So my, um, always when I look uh, or talk to the clients, I make sure that I answer all their questions. And by the end of my conversation, they are satisfied with those answers. And follow-up is a key because if they have any question and I need to respond them back, it is important that I do it on timely manner. So yes, I have done it in, in the past and will keep doing it. I provide them list of documents in um, upfront so that they, I don't have to bother them again and again with the documents. Uh, you know, I need this document, that document. All the documents are in front of me um, in prior to you know proceeding with the application. So right. that really helps. Oh, for sure. Like you know, if uh, they say that preparation is the key yeah. uh, for getting any successful. Uh, to any successful job done, like, yeah. you know, if you prepare well, uh, you educate your clients well, and they have all their questions get answered, then it becomes easy. Easier, yeah. Right. So how's the mortgage world going on these days for you? Well, we all know how the market is right now. Um, obviously, last year was not that great or not so great, yeah. but we are expecting that market will pick up uh, this summer. Uh, we already see that uh, they there were two uh, Bank of Canada announcements and uh, there was no rate change. And we are expecting that it would come down. That yeah. is the expectation. We don't have any crystal ball that we can say, yes, it will come down for sure. But that is the expectation. And once the market comes, you know, um, rate comes down, market will pick up. Oh, for sure. Like, you know, everybody's looking yeah. for the uh, rates to come down, but also um, economy wise, like they have a challenges. Inflation gone up again. Yeah. And uh, that became a challenge for Bank of Canada to cut their interest rate or not. Yeah. Uh, and they also getting the mix, uh, you know, mix statements yeah. coming out. Like sometimes they say, you know, it's going to be stationary. Sometimes they say, no, we have to cut it. And yesterday I heard like they're saying we might have to increase more to bring down the inflation. <laughs> so it's, it's mind boggling. Yes. Uh, nobody hopes that that uh, will need. Uh, but one of the... You know, normal mortgages we talk about and financing always been an issue like since last year. Uh, people were struggling uh, affordability wise. Uh, but one of the biggest thing coming out like the constructions have slowing down. 
and construction is slowing down because builders not able to afford the uh, mortgages or the financing uh, because big banks don't provide them. And when they're reaching out to private lending, their interest rate is pretty high. Like, you know, it's almost like a double digit, uh, which is very high. And the construction cost has gone up. Uh, so I know talking to some builders, like uh, they have shelved their projects as well. Mm -hmm. And just waiting for things to go down so they can do it because it's not profitable for them. And if it's not profitable for them, definitely they're not going to make it. Uh, even government is trying to do a few things, but it's not enough. And I think like that's the that's the issue. <clears throat> but in terms of like a lot of people also taking an opportunity and buying the land or a rundown property, and they want to build their uh, construction home, like you know, custom home. So. Could you start giving us an overview of the types of mortgages products available for builders in Ontario? Sure. So Vishal, first of all, I specialize as a broker. I specialize with construction mortgage as well, mm -hmm. along with the residential mortgages. Correct. And uh, especially for people who are self-employed. Right. So I work very closely with builders. Mm -hmm. I work very closely with clients who want to build custom make the home for themselves. Now what happens is, um, there are two components to it. Mm -hmm. One is that some clients, they are buying the land mm -hmm. and they um, have zero mortgage on it and they just want the construction loan. Exactly. But on the other hand, there are some clients or builders who wants to buy it together. They have a land and they want, they like a land and they want to buy that land and do the construction at the same time. Right. So um, when we are going to the private lenders for that, uh, they they issue construction mortgages. And how it works, it, it, the, you can draw the construction mortgage in stages. So let's suppose you bought the land and now you want to start the construction. Builder or, um, uh, sorry, lender would like builder or the client to put some equity from themselves. Right. So they will build uh, the foundation. And once the foundation is done, appraiser will come from the lender's approver list mm -hmm. and they will do the appraisal. Based mm -hmm. on that appraisal, and if it's approved by the lender, the, you can draw the construction mortgage mm -hmm. for at the first stage. Right. Then there is another stage that you can draw the construction mortgage when the um, framing is done or when the roofing is done. So it's done in stages. Mm. So that's called construction draws. Right. And that's how it works. Mm. But it sounds like it's a little bit risky as well. Um, so for example, if I got the land uh, and now I don't have enough money to put the my uh, foundation mm -hmm. and then we got stuck over there. And sometimes like a lot of people do that mistake because they don't calculate their finances mm -hmm. uh, that how are they going to fund it and how are they going to do it. So in my opinion, we were talking about uh, before that uh, having a proper planning, it's required before even you purchase that kind of property. Uh, my recommendation is always like, you know, reach out to your realtor, your professional um, who specialize in that area, in that neighborhood, and who have done some uh, custom housing uh, consultation. Uh, at the same time, you also reach out to your mortgage agent uh, and talk to them, like, you know, how and what stages they will need the money and how they can get that money. So if you do those consultation, I think like it would be much, much easier. easier. Uh, so you not uh, get stuck into situation which, we, which you cannot get out of. Definitely, it is very important to work with professionals right. who has worked in the past with the construction, uh, you know, mortgages, with they need to know your finances. You need to know your finances yourself. For sure. Like if you don't have enough finances to get into the game, please don't. Mm. Because then you can get stuck. Right. And you don't want to be in a situation where you are paying your mortgage or without any profit. Yeah. Because um, right now the market is a little bit 
tight and it's very difficult to get the construction mortgage itself. Like you can get the construction mortgage depending 65 to 75 percent LTV, but rest of the amount you have to come from your own pocket. Right. And you need to be prepared for that. Mm. You need to have a project manager who can look after your construction project. Mm. You need to make sure that your budget is well planned. Right. You need to make sure there are some fundamentals like architecture, mm. or permits are there. And it costs money. And yeah. it needs to come out from your pocket first Correct. so that the lender can invest in your project. Right, right. So giving the little bit um, to people, how do construction loans differ from standard mortgage products and what makes them unique? So if we compare the construction mortgages with the traditional mortgages, a traditional mortgages, you get all the mortgage amount up front in a lump sum. Correct. But when I just mentioned, but when we uh, go to the construction mortgages, it is not upfront. It comes in stages. Right. As you progress and you make some, uh, you know, um, put some money from your own side right. and make the progress and the appraisal is done. Once the appraisal is approved by the lender, you can draw that money from the lender. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people I know, um, because we're, in North Oakville and a lot of people eyeing on South Oakville mm -hmm. and uh, we have gone through that process that people buying the property over there which is uh, uh, the old house mm -hmm. uh, still livable yeah. and they're buying that property and holding off a little bit and then they start doing some construction on them. All right. um, for that purpose like you know they, they can get the regular mortgage because you know it can rent out that yes. property uh, and then later, they decide to take all the permits um, and get the plan and architect and everything, how b big the house they want to build, and also get the s approval from the city, right? Correct. Uh, because sometimes you have the adjustments that you have to make. Right. Uh, some improvements you have to make. Sometimes you have to keep that certain part of your basement or the foundation uh, in order to build on that because mm -hmm. you cannot change that. Right. Uh, and when they do that, so they can take mortgage that time as well for that property. And then um, once, how, like, you know, I'm always uh, wondering, like, you know, if you buy that, let's say I bought that property. And after one year, I decided to do the construction on them. But mortgage is my already going on for five years right. or three years, whatever it is. Uh, I still have to pay. Bank right. is not coming and looking into that, what you have done with the property. Right. Uh, but like when you're going for the construction loan after that, how the process work? So when you bought the property, it has a it had a house, right? right? And it was in a livable condition. That's right. how lender has given you a mortgage on it, right? Which is fine. Now you decided to rip that property off and make a new home, right? It, right. Um, now what happens is. Before you rip it off, you need to have all the permits in line. Correct. You need to have the architecture plan right. in line. Yeah. Once you have that and you have some money in your pocket, which you can invest to do the basic foundation, you can start the project. Right, right. Well, it um, sounds pretty simple, but at the same time... Well, if uh, it's simple, uh, <laughs> you need to be careful that you are dealing with the professionals. Exactly. Who knows what they are doing and you can trust them. Oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, I know uh, there are a lot of cases happen when people know, uh, they say, yeah, financing is not a problem. Uh, I want to buy that property. It's only 1.1, um, 1 1.3. 1 uh, but then after that, my question to them, do you have enough money after that? Because you're not, you might not get the mortgage loan after the construction loan after that. Right. Um, there might be some hindrance on that. Uh, maybe that property you have the your building envelope is only small, right. which you can build on, and you're not able to do it. So right. that's why it's so important to know uh, when you're buying those that you know it's you can construct on them first, right? And once you construct on that, it's going to be if you have to sell it, it's is a are you able to sell that? Mm -hmm. Is that going to appreciate or is going to be value for that one? Right. right? So. Well, uh, moving forward, um, talking about uh, so what are the typical requirements builders and developers need to meet to qualify for construction loan in Ontario? 
So basically, for a construction loan by the lender, yeah. you need to have accurate or um, valid permit right. by the city. Mm-hmm. So the city needs to approve. Like right. in Oakville, it can take about a year to right. get a permit. In some cities, uh, it could be less, like mm. in North York or you know, greater Toronto area, other areas. It could be less, mm. but uh, you need to have a budget or you need to plan accordingly. Proper project planning is important. Oh right. So permits is an uh, important thing. Mm-hmm. Second is architecture. Third is budget. Right. You need to have a proper budget plan. You need to know what is your soft cost and what is your hard cost right. for building the project or building your property. Mm-hmm. Um, after once you have all these play things in place, obviously your income is important criteria whether you'll be able to pay the lender mm. at their monthly installments um, because when you go for the construction mortgage with private lenders it's interest only you are not paying principal mm. it, it is Im- it is very yeah. important to be aware of that correct usually the construction mortgage is given for few months to a year or maybe 18 months initially right. and if your pro- project is lingering on but making a progress right. you need to Ask for the renewal. Renewal. Right. And then renewal, when renewal kicks in, there is a lender fees and uh, other fees that are involved. So you need to be careful that you are aligned with your project planning and you are, you know, meeting your milestones on time. Hmm. No, that's very important. And uh, as we know with the construction, it always happens like you plan for six months and it's end up in uh, for a year. Uh, yeah. Because anything can happen. Like, you know, maybe uh, supply is not there. Uh, maybe your contractor didn't have uh, that guy, the carpenter over there to uh, do the framing yeah. and it's got delayed. So always uh, keep that in factor as well. Uh, but before we go forward, like, you know, I want to know the uh, current interest rate for construction loans and how they compare to traditional mortgage rates. So for with traditional mortgage, we know the prime is 7.2 right now, right? right? Um, when we look for a uh, construction loan, it's always prime plus, prime plus three, prime plus four, depending on the lender, lender's appetite to take the risk. Mm. It really depends on that. Right. And lender fees could be anywhere from 1% to 4%. Mm. And it really depends on the property, on the deal that they are getting into. Right. The property is in a prime location, not in a rural area. Mm. And they know that the borrower, he has good income, good credit score, that means they will pay back mm. to the lender. Right. You know, you can get some room in the, uh, there is a room, so you can you can get lower interest rate or you can get lower lender fees. Right. That is something that we can negotiate as a broker with the lender, depending on the file and the deal and the property. Right. But if everything is going south, then obviously you are going so to pay high interest rate and lender fees sure. as well. For sure. And so how much is like approximately the lender fee? Well, it starts anywhere from 10% to 14% as well. Oh, so yeah. just a lender fee. Oh, sorry. Oh, so. uh-huh. Sorry, the uh, rate, interest rate. Interest sorry. rate we're talking lender about. Lender fees, like we can talk about, uh, it starts from 1% to 4%. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. That's like, wow, what I can know. No, no, no. We no. were already on double digit on interest no. rate and the lender fee? No, forget about it. Um, uh, well, we always uh, uh, looking into those detail just making sure in totality how much we're going to spend. Yeah. And is that worth? Yes. Right? So always like, but all the same time, they l- these numbers looks great, uh, like, you know, higher. But sometimes, what the, before I go forward, like, you know, what's the lowest construction loan you have seen? Like, what's the lowest contrast, uh, construction loan interest rate you have seen? Lowest, 10.25. That was the lowest? Yes. Okay. Well, um. I know there, there are some challenges, um, but in the real estate market, is always evolving. Um, and can you discuss, like, you know, what are some of the current issues and challenges builders face when seeking construction financing in Ontario? Yes. Um, so when it comes to the construction loan, as a as a borrower, you need to make sure that you have a good credit score, mm-hmm. right? If you do not have a cr- good credit score, no lender wants to give you any loan right. from the construction mortgage. You for go sure. to the private for other properties, you know, if you don't have a good credit score, private lenders, they might look into it, right? right? That's why you do not qualify on A side or B side, then you go to the private. Right. When it comes to construction loan, they want to make sure that you have 
good personal net worth mm. you are able to pay them back so it is very important to have a good credit score good income right. um you know your equity how much you are putting into the project your project plans so all these th- you need to make sure that your ducks are in row correct you need to make sure that all these if you have all these in row and you are doing fine then yes um you won't face much challenge but other challenges that you see today in today's market that construction uh, labor cost has increased for sure right so material is not available so mm. you ha- sometimes your project is delayed because material is not there right. and uh, you you have the worker but you cannot build anything Correct. because you're waiting on the material right third challenge is if you have not appraised your property before the before requesting for a draw right. that can delay the project too mm. so make sure when you are calling the appraisal to do the inspection progress report your work is done according to the schedule mm. according to your timelines right otherwise this can delay your project as well right um other challenges that i've seen is permit especially mm. um in oakville area mm. it is uh, it has taken somewhere from 9 months to a year right uh, to get the permit that is another issue well i know some of the um i won't say much about the uh, uh blue collar um uh, things but at the same time like some of the red tape mm-hmm. and definitely uh, delay the projects and delay the permits uh, i wish they can do quicker mm-hmm. but i think they have the challenges with the staffing as well yeah. <coughs> and that's uh, that's hinder in making that progress uh, in getting those loans so again the suggestion is like you know make sure wherever you mine uh know how long that is taking uh some of the contractors may might give you say hey don't worry about it like it will be taken care of because they want to uh, get your project uh but do uh reach out to different ones and reach out to those ones who have done locally uh who have dealt with uh town of that town or city before uh, otherwise you know again just like you were saying that you can get stuck in there so those challenges can happen um i know it's still lingering even the covid is gone mm-hmm. but it's still lingering in our in our mindset definitely and so how has the covid-19 pandemic impacted the construction loan market and what trends are you seeing now can you do the little bit about what the pre covid was and what happened after covid see i have seen pre covid uh construction loan um loan to value lenders were providing up to 80% mm. but now they have restricted they are more risk averse mm. they don't want to take they want to make sure that your stakes are there in the property before they can start right. investing right for because sure because still the market is not stable right they they want to make sure that their money is secure right so um we have seen that uh, definitely covid-19 has disrupted this chain and uh, it has impacted my clients as well right now um they want to make sure that um there is a dem- there is a shift in the demand that you know more people are going towards the residential mortgages or residential homes right. rather than commercial recently people are working from home right and uh, there is a high demand of residential mm. but at the same time they are risk averse mm. they want to make sure that their pro- money is secured we have seen that uh, supply chain from um, the, for you know we have already talked about it right. that supply chain is impacted as well because of covid-19 um there is a, a shift of the market from residential from um, commercial to residential right. um there is a evolving lending criteria they have sec- they have tightened the li- lending um, criteria they mm. want to make sure that you know all the um income criteria credit scores they are um, in a good shape before right. they lend money yeah Yeah, and that's always been yeah. like the credit score has always been the um, uh, big uh, thing and also looking into that before they you can show them where the other incomes coming from but now because the ratio have changed uh, that get become more challenging because you're putting more down payment yes uh, you putting 
you don't you have to have a more cash on your hand in order to start that project uh, or purchase that exactly. uh, land i know we uh, we talk about and a lot of people probably haven't seen that but could you explain the uh, loan draw schedules and inspections uh explain the concept of draw schedule in construction loans and how they work sure so let's suppose vishal you yeah. are interested in buying a property right. and where you want to do a construction loan mm-hmm. you will come to your mortgage broker right. experienced mortgage mortgage broker like me yeah <laughs> to get the construction loan right so i can go to a lender where i can do a package of land as well as construction mm. so lender look at the property right. and they say you know what i like this area right. i like how uh, your uh, plan mm. i like the house that you're building i like the permits i like the architecture your budget is you know to today's market obviously yeah. there is a buffer because of the change in market maybe in a year um their construction cost can go up or mm. low Correct. you should have that buffer that uh, you know um 20% i would say yeah. at least 20% buffer in your budget as well and then they give you a construction loan probably 65% of mm. the appraised value mm. so let's suppose if you bought a property for about 2.1% and after the construction it will be um 4.5% or 4.5 uh, million, million they will give you 65% loan to value of 4.5 million. million. Okay. That is your mortgage construction for for land and construction. Mm-hmm. Now you have to have 35% from your own pocket. Correct. Now you will go and apply for the permit. Mm. You will go and apply for um, first of all you need to have the architecture, you need to have plan right. and then you will apply for the permit. Right. Once uh, permit is approved, you have to have budget in right. line. Now the all that together when you are showing it to your uh, lender they will prepare a schedule for you mm. they will say okay vishal will give you your draw once you will complete the foundation mm. once the foundation is completed you will call the same appraiser who appraised the property originally right, right. and he will do a progress report on it right that progress report is sent to the lender lender will review it once the approval is done they will give you that first draw right you will take that money and you will put into the property and you will or you know construction cost and you will go to the um you can say framing right once the framing is done then you will call the appraiser again who will do the progress report that progress report is sent to the lender once the um lender approves that progress report you will issue second draw yeah so you got the like yes. more so, money on that yeah so that really helps construction draws that mm-hmm. really helps you because that will make sure that m- your money is used where it is intended to for sure right and you are achieving your milestones on time you it is keeping you on track so it's a very good thing both for the lender and for the yeah. borrower no that's that's true um and it, it is important um but for our viewers our listeners uh, probably wants to know what role do inspections play in the draw process and who is responsible for them so it is a very important role and uh, the inspection is done by the approved appraisers mm. or uh, they these lenders they have a approved list of appraisers they come and they do the inspection correct and obviously that inspection can be ordered by the mortgage broker mm. or you yourself some lenders allow that he, you as a borrower you can order an appraiser or progress report on your property mm. which is sent to the lender so both lender and inspector is playing that role right. and um it is important that when you call them you're not wasting their time if you know that your framing is not complete do not call the inspector for sure you want to make because you're paying money for that inspection too um which is not a lot but still it's your money right and it you is. don't want to go it into waste right so Yes, so inspection is important. Well, great information uh, regarding construction loan and how the process work and uh, definitely for more information, uh, they can always reach out to you and so you can provide a more thorough uh, detail yes. that what paperwork you required and uh, but I will say like you no, know, even you're thinking about purchasing it. 
it's no harm in getting the consultation. Um, because like, you know, even thinking of like, you know, maybe in two years or three years, you're thinking of uh, purchasing a property and build your dream home, construction home, uh, your villa, um, and uh, you reach out like before, uh, before even you start looking for properties or land. In that way, you will be better prepared. Now, shifting our gears uh, to self-employed individuals um, who are looking to build or buy, what options are available to them in Ontario? I know like you know, some of the banks have the very good program uh, for self-employed mm -hmm. uh, if you're just going to buy the residential properties. Right. And some of the banks, they don't do it. Like, and they have more regress options. Um, uh, regress procedure, should I say, right. that uh, to achieve that. So could you explain the concept, uh, sorry, um, self-employed individuals uh, looking to uh, buy and what options are available? Definitely. When you are uh, self-employed, there are um, certain criteria that is used by the A lenders, right. which are more lenient towards the B lender. Mm. When you are going with the A lenders, like our five big banks, right. they require that you are self-employed at least from last two years. Correct. And they look at the average of your uh, you know, income declared. Correct. But when you go to the B lender, that is one of the important criteria too. You can get approved with that right. or there is some thing called stated income program hmm. in which um, we do look into your 12 months bank statement of your corporation and we see how you are doing the deposits hmm. and based on that your income is calculated um, and your expenses are subtracted from those deposits right. and uh, that's how you get approved. Well, it's it's a process because I'm self-employed and uh, mm -hmm. recently I got a mortgage as well. Uh, and to my surprise, like sometime it happens, like, you know, what are you looking for? I reach out to one of the mortgage broker um, that time and expecting, like, you know, I'll get the better rate because mm -hmm. that's what thinking, because good to be as a realtor, like, you know, always connecting with people. And right. Uh, but also I didn't want to uh, leave my current bank who I bank with mm. because my previous mortgages are with them. Right. Uh, so I got the advantage based on that, like if the bank was able to give the better rate um, and they will give a bigger amount because right. they have all my history. History. Right. Um, stuff like, you know, for the new lender, they have to dig into my history and they have to look into that. And then they say, hey, there's a risk. Uh, you might approve for bigger mortgage. Uh, you have a limited uh, options. So this is like, this is like me uh, talking about according to you, because you see like all kind of self-employed people, mm -hmm. just not the realtors. Right. Um, what challenges do self-employed individuals uh, face when applying for mortgages or construction loans and how can they navigate these um, obstacles? So for self-employed people, um, you know how it works. They do not declare the income what they are making. Right. They are declaring less than that. When we go to well, that's include lender. expenses. It's not like we're hiding. No, no, no. Um, for sure, for yeah, sure. But yeah. it's not, you know, it's not for the sure. same yeah. as T4. Exactly. It's not the um, uh, same as traditional income. Right. 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 So when you go to the A lenders, obviously they want to see your T1s and they want to see how much you made in last two years, how stable your job was. Right. Right. If you are shifting your jobs mm. or if you are changing very frequently, yes. that doesn't help. Right, if for you're sure. Self employed. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Today you are doing um, IT business and tomorrow you went and started some construction, construction say, business. Yeah. That's not helpful. For sure. You need to be stable in the market, whatever you are whatever doing. Whatever you're doing, yes. And you need to make sure that um, you have all the invoices that you are. Some people, they don't keep the invoices. Yeah. If they are self employed, they have deposit coming in, but they don't know what they, from where this uh, invoice is coming in. Yeah. So make sure that you have your invoices intact and you can provide it to your mortgage broker. And this program is specially designed for self-employed people, so take advantage of that. Right. Um, there are other challenges that they have to face if their credit score is not good. So make credit sure score always plays yes, a big role. Yes, and make sure that your credit score is good, and you can do that by making sure that you pay your debts on time. Yes, 
your utility on the credit cards is lower. It's less than 30%, I would say. Right. Don't go and, um, you know, purchase different credit cards ju- just to have more credit cards. Right, right. right. Make sure the utility is below 30%. Your credit score is good. Pay your, um, you know, debts on time. Keep your debt to income ratio low. Relax. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's it's very important. Like, you know, it's even you're getting the credit card and everything. And a lot of people think that's a good thing because they can have more buying power. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it's restrict them like when you're going to get the loans uh, exactly. for uh, house loans because they were looking to that risk that like you already have that money which you can spend. And now you're asking for more more money. So definitely uh, ratio works just for that. Yep. Um, and they're... In self-employed, also there's a different categories, mm-hmm. right? Like you know, for example, like you know, IT contractors, mm-hmm. they are different categories. I think probably a little bit easier uh, because they're going into the corporation and from corporation they're withdrawing the money, they're putting yeah. in their personal account. Uh, so when that kind of situation happens, do they look into the both income, like what's they withdrawing from the uh, their uh, their account, Dividend. like in the corporation? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how much they're giving and how they're distributing it and also what's their personal income is? So they are two different programs. Correct. If we are going towards uh, calculating their T1s, what they are, uh, you know, they are declaring and taking out the dividend, then it's a different program. Correct. But if we are going towards a stated income program, right. that's your 12 months bank statements. Right. And your invoices. Right. So that's different. So we cannot double dip two incomes. Yeah, yeah. For one. So proprietorship and corporation, that's what we're talking about. Yes. If you have a proprietorship, like a definitely it's go a little bit um, easier, I believe, and because you have the last 24 months. Right. of income um, and if you're doing the corporation then you also have to look into the dividends and what other things correct right. so that's uh, that's also like bringing me like a one more question about I know a lot of people thinking about the like multifamily uh, multiplexes and stuff mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. and they want to buy on the corporation right. uh, sometime and sometimes it's get difficult because it's coming from the corporation not from individual. Have you dealt with that kind of situation we can talk about? Yes. Uh, recently, I uh, one of my clients, he bought a property which was multi-unit property. Right. Um, it had six units. Mm. And uh, it's a positive cash flow. Mm. And he wanted to buy that. Right. And definitely, he, was got, he got approved with the A lender as well. Mm. Because it was a multi-unit property and uh, there is a different program. Correct. And government is also encouraging right. for you to buy multi-unit, multi-unit properties. properties yes. Because, you know, you can put it on rent and, uh, you know, people need houses for rent. To put That's what I was mentioning in yes. uh, one of the episodes um, uh, that about how lucrative looking into the current uh, residential real estate market uh, multi units, how beneficial it can be in mm-hmm. the long term, uh, based on the cash flow. Because these days, uh, like in the reality, you're not getting the cash flow yeah. at all. You're doing more based on appreciation and what the future value is going to be for that right. property. Um, but like in people who are investors, they look into uh, that cash flow, and also when you're doing the rental property, you're looking at the vacancy rate. Uh, how it's going to help them when, if you have one unit, for example, and if it's a vacant for two months, you definitely lose losing your income, like full income. But if you have a multi-unit and you have like a six people living over there and two of the units are not rented, still you're getting some income uh, and most of it, right? Correct. So in that way, it's get more lucrative. Um, based on experience, what advice would you give to builders and self-employed individuals seeking construction loans or mortgages in today's market? Be careful, I would say. If you're going into the construction mortgages, plan your project. Mm. Make sure your plan is at least, if not 100%, it's 97% accurate. Mm. Make sure that you have equity with you before you jump into the such project. Right. There are, um, there are different uh, mortgages which is available, which is similar to the construction mortgage right. uh, for builders. It's mm. called builder's line of credit. Mm. And very few lenders have that product. 
already. So I yeah, I yeah. deal with uh, one of the lender who provides me the line of credit. Mm. It's similar to the construction one. It's just that it's vigorous. They look at everything. everything yeah. They look at all the properties you have. They look at that you have the t- if you are a builder, you are you have the Tarian license. Right. You are you are providing that warranty with your building, right? Correct. With your right. property. They want to make sure you, that your credit is great. Mm-hmm. They want to make sure if you the projects that you have done in the past how good they, those projects were. Hmm. Were you um, able to make any money into it or you were in loss? What is your experience like? So these are different things that lenders look into when you uh, they are giving you any mortgage, whether it's for builders or for you know your own custom made home. Yeah, for sure. So if you are, cu- you are uh, making home for yourself and you have a project manager or you have... Uh, you know, other people who are looking into your project, they want to see their experience as well. Yeah, for they sure. They want to make sure that your personal network is great and you can make pay them back. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Like anybody exactly. lending you money, they want to know where yes. I'm going to recover money from. Exactly. And this is so. only for up to 18 months initially or, you know, I would right. say a few months to a year. Right. And some cases I have given construction mortgage for up to 18 months as well. Right. And they wanted to renew it for a couple of months, right. which was fine as well. Yeah, yeah, it all depends. It all depends. Yeah. Um, moving on, like you know, we got into situation, and uh, sometimes we get stuck uh, in different situation, and that's why it's so important about we cannot uh, say enough that plan it well and have those things ready. A lot of time it happens, like you know. We get influenced by our friend who just did the construction, but they did it like, you know, a year ago. Mm-hmm. And now things have changed mm-hmm. um, in within a year. And you cannot have that. So learn from them what the mistakes they have done. Uh, it's definitely it's better to learn from other people's mistakes than rather doing yourself. Exactly. Uh, but at the same time, take everything as a, like a pinch of salt. Mm-hmm. And don't assume that because they got it and they ha, uh, have done it, that you can do it as well. So that's why if you're doing it first time, um, you know, definitely be cautious about, uh, not only cautious about, ask questions, uh, reach out to professionals and try to get as much information and knowledge you can get before you decide to delve into that. Because it's easier said that, like, you know, I can get that, oh, I'm getting a wonderful land over here. Um, it used to be like in the million dollar, but now I'm getting for 700 or 800. Mm-hmm. It's, the, uh, uh, it's a foreclosure or something. But then after that, what? If you don't have the money to build it, mm-hmm. you got stuck. Yeah. You cannot rent that out. You cannot do anything about it. So looking ahead, the future of construction financing, uh, how do you see the landscape of uh, construction financing and mortgages uh, for self-employed individuals involving in the new future in Ontario? So when we talk about the self-employed or uh, any construction mortgage uh, for self-employed people, it's again come down to your credit. Right. Again come down to your income. Mm -hmm. Again come down to your personal net worth, uh, your project plan. And uh, you, your feasibility with the lenders can increase or your flexibility they can provide you yeah. if you have all these things in place. Yeah, like let's say they all they have. Uh, mm-hmm. What I'm just talking about over here is like, you know, what trend you're seeing and what you're seeing that some of the changes which a government might bring it down, mm-hmm. uh, looking to that tightening up or... Uh, seeing because the construction's not happening that much, they trying to give some incentives to builders as well. Mm-hmm. And because that's what always happens. Definitely they are board. doing that because yeah. they want builders to make a residential homes for right. people. There are so many immigration happening. Um, yeah. Immigrants are moving into the country. Right. And um, that is one of the criteria You know, they are looking into that where are they going to live. Right. And they are supporting the fact that you should build residential homes um, permits are, which were, you know, taking longer. They are trying their best from the city to bring it, you know, faster, mm. do it faster for them. Yeah, um, and not doing it fast enough because uh, yeah, it's taking yeah, eight to nine yeah, months. For uh, sure. That's not fast enough. Yes, 
and that is I'm talking about last year and yeah. uh, now I see in other cities it has speeded up. Okay. Yeah. Well, so things are improving, things are changing a little bit and that's what we hope for better future uh for uh real estate because Canada's economy and lot depend on uh real estate over here mm-hmm. and a lot depend upon construction if the construction slow down uh that's going to give us same issue like what we had before uh, like a shortage of supply of uh ret- residents over here and that's why uh government is encouraging it for the um to people to buy the multifamily home um create more uh rental housing uh and uh some announcements are happening uh but are they happening fast enough we're not sure but here what we will do what we are meant to do like you know helping you guys with the uh, real estate advice and provide you wisdom which can be a uh, useful and helpful for you not only in the current market but also in the future market so thank you for watching and uh, really appreciate and that you uh keep giving us your suggestions how to improve and how to uh provide value to you so if you have any particular a uh, topic which you want us to discuss or you want me to bring some guest over here uh, on professional uh, I'll happy to do so and uh, once you get the information if you keeping that information that's not enough you have to share that information with others so they can get benefit so if you're getting the benefit from this podcast please do share with your uh, like-minded people who might get benefit from this thank you for watching happy to help you bye for now this podcast is for informational purpose only and should not be considered as financial or investment advice consult with your professional before making any real estate decisions